Um, okay, so I, I'm going to now introduce um, our third speaker, Andrea Ross Boyle, um, who's a survivor of, let's see, of, bre <laughs> of breast cancer. Andrea Ross Boyle was born and raised and resides on Long Island. After 11 years as creative director at Hearst Magazines uh, in New York, she formed her own Long Island design company, um, affording flexibility to raise two sons while earning a living and doing what she's so passionate about. Um, Andrea starts um, most days with a grounding walk at the beach and attends weekly cancer yoga classes in Reiki. She's so immensely grateful uh, to all of those who have helped her and is very committed to cancer charities that brought joy and understanding during this unexpected journey. Um, I'm sure you're going to give some inspiring um, talk to us. So speak to us. Okay. Um, in twenty in February of twenty twelve, I brought in my fifties reciting the motto that God was planning to do me good. In February of twenty thirteen, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, ultimately stage four metastasized to my neck, spine, and pelvis. Um, but never appearing in January's mammogram. That mammogram was just three weeks earlier. And it never detected the large mass on one side or the irregular cells on the other. What I did detect was a microscopic calcium cluster, which they removed. And the following week, I got a phone call, not asking me to come in in person, but rather very nonchalantly telling me my results were positive and that I should go find a surgeon, just like that. So after absorbing what I had been told and gathering my senses, I lined up six consults. And beginning that following Monday, I met with a prominent surgeon near my home on Long Island to biopsy those margins. I sat at the surgeon's desk while she pulled out a pad and began drawing different types of double mastectomies. And by the third drawing, I stood up and I nearly fell over had it not been for my girlfriend who caught me. The very next day, I met Dr. Freya Schnabel, the director of breast surgery here at NYU, and I immediately liked her. She addressed me in terms I could understand. I waited for her to pull out that pad and start drawing, but she didn't. She instead looked at me with, uh, with her eyes and spoke softly and clearly and directly, discovering discussing everything from the next steps moving forward, leading to conservative, and then to radical procedures. She was kind and she was empathetic. And I knew, I knew she was the surgeon for me. She also explained that in order to be her patient, she required a non-routine contrast MRI, and I agreed on the spot and went directly to that department. That MRI and Dr. Schnabel's request is what saved my life, and I will forever believe that God was planning to do me good. I've always seen the glass full. I've always lived in the moment. I've always crossed every bridge as I got to it. I have my day-to-day, -day, and that's how I conduct my life. And it didn't matter what the diagnosis was, because I still had stuff to do, and it had to get done and dying just wasn't an option. So here I am four and a half years later, four biopsies, five, five core bone biopsies, four surgeries and radiation later. I never felt sick and I still don't feel sick. So here are some of my thoughts about those years. I believe the tumultuous emotions, the weeks leading me from one additional unexpected diagnosis to the next was harder than my surgeries. I also clearly remember the realization that surgery is definitive. You know, they got it, they didn't get it, um, whereas oncology is not so definitive. But then comes Dr. Marlene Myers, my oncologist, whose first recommended treatment, my, hormone, my monthly hormone therapy, is what still keeps me alive and happy. Thank you. Those first years are what I call survival mode, with my two sons really my only core concern. Uh, the doctor appointments juxtaposed my schedules of middle and high school boys were daunting. 
their positivity and joy were my main goal. But the idea of not being able to do it all made the difficult seem all more so difficult. And had it had not been from the incredible support of my friends and my family, I would have never pulled through. And for that, I'm eternally blessed. I was also lucky that my local Y formed a group called Camp Hope, which hosted activities for families with young children and parents with cancer. It was there I met several people who became my dear friends. And as we journeyed and discovered together and we shared supportive information, uh, it was there that I learned about inheritance of hope. And directly following my six weeks of daily radiation, uh, my family was recipients of a Florida Inheritance of Hope retreat, where we went to Disney and SeaWorld and Universal. But the real magic was what Inheritance of Hope offered, which was counseling, a personal volunteer, um, a photo album of all our laughter, and loving support. Initially, I really didn't think I deserved to be there because there were so many people so much sicker than myself. But soon I felt like the cheerleader for everyone. And so the experience was so moving that this November will be my fourth year volunteering for Inheritance of Hope in the New York City retreat, uh, where I create gift bags for each family filled with New York City memorabilia, some collected from the Giants, Jets, and Mets, I get dinners for two at top restaurants, as well as pre-reserved spots on the Macy's Day Parade. And my only wish moving forward is to pay it forward, the gift of helping others during their hour of need as others did for me during my hours of need. Cancer's taught me to embrace the choices that I've made in my life with greater acceptance and greater understanding I feel so blessed to have been able to juggle my career with flexibility while being there for my boys who are now 17 and 14. I actually planned my surgeries to recoup during baseball season in the sunshine surrounded by my friends watching our kids play. I have slowed down my 24-7 mentality, mentally and physically, while trying to regain a new, self, a new sense of self, rebuilding lost time crossing things off the bucket list, and re-understanding how I want to move forward purposefully. Lately, as was stated, I start my days with a grounding walk at the beach at the wee hours, as well as attending yoga, uh, weekly yoga classes and Reiki. And I have a sign in my kitchen that reads, life is not about surviving the storm, it's about learning how to dance in the rain. Lastly, I wish to thank NYU, Dr. Freya Schnabel, Dr. Marlene Myers, my nurses, Deidre and Thelma, Dr. Elijah Jem, my therapist here, Amanda, who's at Integrative Health, and all the wonderful staff here at NYU who greet me with smiles and decency and respect each fourth Monday of the month, that one day of the month, when I even somewhat acknowledge that I have cancer. Thank you.